Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 7, Chapter 10, Prahlad, the best among exalted devotees, text number 4. Nanyata tekila guru. Gat, gat teta karmanat manaha, kurunat manaha. Yasta ashisha ashaste. Nasa Britya Sa Vai Vanik Nanyata Te Kila Guru Gateta Kurunat Manaha Yasta Shisha As Shaste Nasa Britya Sa Vai Vanik Nanyata te kila guru. Kateta kurunat manaha. Yasta shisha asyaste. Nasabritya savayvanik. Nanyata te kila guru. Kateta kurunat manaha. Yasta Ashisha Ashashte Nasa Britya Savai Manik Na Nat Anyata Otherwise Te of you Akila Guru O Supreme Instructor of the entire universe of the entire creation Kateta, such a thing can happen. Karuna Atmanaha, the supreme person who is extremely kind to his devotees. Yaha, any person who. Te, from you. Ashisha, material benefits. Ashaste, desires in exchange for serving you. Na, not, saha, such a person. Vritya, a servitor. Sa, such a person. <coughs> indeed, vai, indeed. Vanik, a merchant who wants to get material profit from his business. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada. Otherwise, O oh my Lord, O oh Supreme Instructor of the entire world, you are so kind to your devotee that you cannot induce him to do something unbeneficial for him. On the other hand, one who desires some material benefit in exchange for devotional service cannot be your pure devotee. Indeed, he is no better than a merchant who wants profit in exchange for service. Shri Prabhupada's purport. <clears throat> it is sometimes found that one comes to a devotee or a temple of the Lord just to get some material benefit. Such a person is described here as a mercantile man. The Bhagavad Gita speaks of Artho Jagnasya Artarati. The, the word Artha refers to one who is physically distressed, and arta arti refers to one in need of money. Such persons are forced to approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead for mitigation of their distress or to get some money by the benediction of the Lord. They have been described as sukriti, pious, because in their distress or in need of mon for money, they have approached the Supreme Lord. 
And thus, one is pious, one cannot approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead. However, although a pious man may receive some material benefit, one who is concerned with material benefits cannot be a pure devotee. When a pure devotee receives material opulence, this is not because of his pious activity, but for the service of the Lord. When one engages in devotional service, one is automatically pious. Therefore, a pure devotee is anyabilasita shunyam. He has no desire for material profit, nor does the Lord induce him to try to profit materially. When a devotee needs something, the Supreme Personality of Godhead supplies it. Yoga, shemam, vaham, yaham. Sometimes materialists go to a temple to offer flowers and fruit to the Lord. <clears throat> because they have learned from Bhagavad Gita that if a devotee offers some fruits, flowers and fruits, the Lord accepts them. In Bhagavad Gita 9.26, the Lord says, Patram pushpam palam toyam yome bhakta priyachiti taraham bhakti uparitam ashnami priyatatmanaha. If one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, a fruit, or water, I will accept it. Thus a man with a mercantile mentality thinks that if he gets some material benefit, like a large amount of money, simply by offering a little fruit and flower, this is good business. Such persons are not accepted as pure devotees (coughs) because their desires are not purified. They are still mercantile men, even though they go to the temples to make a show of long being devotees. Sarupati viniramuktam tatparadvena niravalam. Only when one is fully freed from material desires can one be purified, and only in that purified state one can serve the Lord. Rishikena, Rishikesha, Sevanam, Bhakti Uchite. This is the pure devotional platform. Nanyata te kila guru gateta karunat manaha yastara shisha ashaste nasabritya savaivanik. Otherwise, my lord, O supreme instructor of the entire world, you are so kind to your devotee that you cannot induce him to do something unbeneficial for him. On the other hand, one who desires some material benefit in exchange for devotional service cannot be your pure devotee. Indeed, he is no better than a merchant who wants profit in exchange for service. Mom Vishnu Vraya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutte, Sri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tiramane, Namaste Saraswatam Deve, Gauravani Vacharane, Nirvi Shesha Shindivadi, Paskatya De Sitarane. One of the big greatest impediments for making advance in a devotional service is to think one is already a devotee. Because if one is already a devotee, there's no need to make any more advancement because one is already perfect. Therefore, when one reads the Bhagavad Gita or Chaitanya Charitamrita or Srimad Bhagavatam, one thinks, yeah, I'm right, that's right, I'm a pure devotee. Me, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and this Panchatatra, we're all, we're, we're together. The only difference is that they're on the altar and I'm temporarily on the floor here. (laughs) But one day my picture will be up there or maybe my statue too and we'll all be together as we should be together. But actually in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna spends a lot of time, even in Bhagavad Gita, trying to give us the understanding of what actually it means to be a pure devotee. For instance, in the sixth chapter, Krishna says, Udarad Atman Atmanam, Atmanam Avasarayat, Admaiva Yatmano Bandur, Admaiva Ripur Atmanaha. Then a man must elevate himself by his own mind and not degrade himself. The mind is the friend of the conditioned soul and his enemy as well. So the question is, is our mind our best friend or is it our enemy? Now, Krishna says, you can say, you can know 
If your mind is the best friend, how? What's the symptom of the fact that your mind is your best friend? What's that? Yes. How often? All the time. So anyone here is thinking about Krishna all the time? Maybe once in a while for a split second, then the mind deviates from Krishna, but rapidly comes back. Oh my God, I forgot Krishna. How could this happen? That's called a sakti. But Krishna says, Pandurat matmanas tasya, yenai vat matmanajita, anatmanas tu shatrud ve varte tat maiva shatrud vat. That for one who has conquered the mind is the best of friends, and for one who has failed to do so, his very mind will be the greatest enemy. Chitatmana prasantasya paramatma samahita, chitoshna sugudukhe shu titamana pamanyo. And for one who has conquered the mind, the super soul is already reached, free has attained tranquility. So such a person, happiness and distress, heat and cold, honor and dishonor, they're all the same. And then Krishna goes on, the symptoms, even on the stage of liberation, Brahman realization. Because after all, Brahman realization means the shoshiti, the kangshiti. No more hankering, no more lamentation. And if we are hankering, lament, lamenting, then there's no question of being prasanatma, being joyful. How can you be hankering materially and be lamenting materially and be joyful? Is it possible? You think so? <laughs> I want this. I can't live without it. I'm so happy. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm so sad. It's so terrible. Things are bad and they're getting worse. But I'm joyful anyhow. <laughs> Wipe my tears away, please. And if we're hankering and lamenting, how can we see everyone equally? Is it possible? See everyone as a spiritual soul? You're a rascal. You're the one who did it. You're the cause. You're, you're, not one, you're the one who's keeping it away from me. You're the obstacle. If I get rid of you, everything will be great. So this is called Samak Sarveshubu Mad Bhakti That's before one can actually enter in pure devotional service. So if we're not on that level, lo and behold, we must have some anarthas. We must have some, some unwanted desires, some unwanted habits. There must be something covering our consciousness that's impelling us to act and desire in ways which are not purely spiritual. Now, of course, for those in the mode of passion, they look at these shudras, disgusting shudras, why are you always lamenting? Why don't, why don't you hanker like I am? <laughs> Such a lowly person, all you do is lament. You don't do anything productive. I build skyscrapers and eat with a nice tablecloth and you don't know how to enjoy all kinds of sweets and misty dye, samosas, glove limits. Why don't? You, why are you lamenting? You should hanker for these things like I am. And for those in the mode of passion and goodness, they think all oh, these people are just wasting their time. Why don't they regulate their lives so they can fix it on Brahman, like the, the like the learned Brahmins do? These low-class people hankering and lamenting in the material energy. 
And for the Brahmins, they realize that this world is a waste of time, that I'm a fallen soul, I'm trapped by the material nature, I must purify my consciousness and become humble and realize my only hope is dependency on Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. So one can come to the Brahman platform, then at least he knows I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm in Maya. I'm being attacked by the illusory energy. I must stop this angry lamentation. I must do something positive to get out of my entanglement. And the only way of doing it is to surrender to Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. Otherwise, I simply wind up committing offenses, uparas, and getting involved and entangled in so many material desires. Then, when one comes to that platform, then mud bhakti labhate param, one can begin actual devotional service. Now, if we're not on that platform, we should try to identify <coughs> what are my desires? And not just let them flow through my mind. Oh, I hate this person. He's my obstacle. I'm a, I'm a devotee. He's preventing my pure devotional service. Is that possible? That some living entity can prevent your pure devotional service? Did Haranyakashipu have the power to prevent Prahlad Maharaj's pure devotional service? Prahlad Maharaj said, I would really love to serve Krishna, but... My father is just too powerful. <laughs> no, there's no one in the world in this universe can prevent us performing the pure devotional service. And if we think someone is preventing us, that's our that's what's preventing us. <laughs> just this acceptance, putting the blame on someone else. It's easy to put the blame on someone else. Because therefore, that person will never change, and our will never change either. We have a good exchange, why we, good excuse why we don't change is because that person doesn't change. And therefore, we could stay comfortable in the material world, thinking ourselves completely justified. We're actually pure soul, completely sincere soul. But <clears throat> we're being imp impeded by all kinds of demoniac forces. No, actually, there is no impediment at all for pure devotional service, unless the only impediment is we don't want to perform it. And why don't we want to perform it? Because we're attached to so, so many different things. We actually feel we have a good reason to lament. We, ha we actually feel that we have a good reason to hope in the future things will be different. Better for me, at least. And we hope in the future that I'll be able to organize everything in such a way as that I'll be, I actually become free from my hankering lamentation because I'll find the perfect material arrangement for myself. And then we hope that, all right, I have, there's nothing in the material world here for me. Let me get out of it. I don't care where I go, but someplace else other than here. So as long as we have these ideas, when we chant Hare Krishna, who will be saying, my dear Lord, as we, we heard that before, give me a house, give me a wife, give me a color TV, Om Jai Jagadish Shahari. <laughs> well, just be chanting and praying to Krishna. Krishna, you know, my birthday is coming up pretty soon, and... <laughs> you are my father, Supreme Father. You know, you're supposed to give some presents. You, you missed out on Christmas, but <laughs> it's all right. I know you, you don't celebrate Christmas, but still my birthday, Janma, you know, Janma. <laughs> I gave you something for your birthday, so. Yeah, you time on day. So Krishna doesn't want us to hanker, he doesn't want us to lament. He wants us simply to chant Hare Krishna and to actually try to experience Krishna's presence in his holy name. And the reason why we don't do that is because our minds are covered by so many different ideas that we need this and we 
we didn't need that, and what's going to happen? What will happen is if we actually concentrate on the holy name, then we'll become conscious of Krishna. That's what will happen. If we don't, we're never going to become conscious of Krishna. And the only way to, con- to, to concentrate is to recognize what our foolishness is in trying to become secure, happy, peaceful, whatever else it is in this material world, and think that somehow or another, I'm going to do something here in the material world that's going to give me some permanent place in some other world. other than simply to surrender to Krishna. In other words, at the end of this life, do we really want, you know, a plaque or a samadhi that tells us everyone how much we did, as if we did anything, except to cause trouble. (laughs) So if we think we did anything except for causing trouble, Cause whatever we, we did, whatever it was done that didn't cause trouble, that was done by the mercy of the, of our acharyas and disciples of succession to Krishna. They utilize this as an instrument and belatedly or very reluctantly, we agreed to surrender. Being slapped by the material energy, we said, all right, Krishna, I, I think it's time to surrender a little bit. I mean, my, my cheeks are sore. My, my stomach hurts from all the kicks and. <laughs> I think I'm going to surrender a little bit. <laughs> and then we surrender a little bit. Yeah, and we go, yeah, just see how much surrendered I am. <laughs> I'm such a great soul, I can't believe it. I wonder if anyone else can believe it. <laughs> so Krishna is not impressed by our so-called surrender and then our taking shelter of the illusory energy again to confirm how great we are because we surrender. As Prabhupada wrote in one letter, more or less, he said that some devotees said, could I demand to see Krishna? And Prabhupada said in his letter, in his reply, more or less, he said, how can I demand to see Krishna? If I examine my qualifications to see Krishna, I'll see that I have no qualifications. All I have is disqualifications. But my spiritual master, he's dragging me home. So that we have to see where there's a whole history of our hankering and lamentations since time immemorial, our mistreating other living entities, trying to exploit them either in goodness or in passion or ignorance. It's just like this whole history within our heart. And there are certain principles that as soon as we catch hold of one of those principles, a whole history unfolds. It gives us a certain conception, impels us in a certain way, and we call that our personality. We think it's ourselves and we're attached to it. It's me. How can I change me? But it's actually just our conditioned nature caused by our foolishness since time immemorial. Therefore, one has to see, take an example of a pure devotee, such as Prahlad Maharaj and others, and simply become their servant act as a servant, and not expect any material benefit from it. Simply simply oneself to be a humble servant of the servant of the servant of Krishna. And be, by becoming an instrument, we might do some good to ourselves and to good to others. Otherwise, without that attitude, without that understanding, then we're simply perhaps making some advancement through the modes of material nature, but that process is extremely slow. It's possible to get tired of being in ignorance all the time. It's possible to even get free from a little bit of passion. Oh, every Sunday feast, I eat too much and I'm sick the next day. Maybe I should eat a little less. (laughs) Maybe it's possible to gradually get, but that's not pure devotional service. Better to actually become a little bit more conscious, whatever we're doing, and try to figure out what Krishna wants us to do and the mood in which we should do it, et cetera, et cetera. And therefore actually do something beneficial for ourselves in any circumstance we're under. 
So it doesn't matter what our particular circumstance, although here come, doing sadhana bhakti is certainly a much more likely place where we'll understand things properly and try to apply our consciousness properly. Or even in preaching, it's more likely by getting the feedback from the preaching that we'll be able to adjust our consciousness accordingly and understand what I have to correct. But still, in any circumstance, if we take shelter of Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra, we can make spiritual advancement, real advancement. But as Prahlad Maharaj said here, we shouldn't become vaniks, doing some service of Krishna and then expecting something in return for our service. The only thing we should expect in return is opportunities to do more service and maybe a better understanding of how to do it. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Any questions, comments? So how can we control our mind? Like, uh, like Arjuna says in one of those verses, that the mind is more difficult to control than the wind. So how can we try? Take, take a course on wind catching. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> the first way we take we control our mind is just making an effort to do it. And what is that effort? We don't try to stop the mind. We try to hear something superior. By hear by reading shastra, by hearing from the devotees, by chanting Hare Krishna, and try to fi- listen. That's all. That's the way the mind becomes controlled. And if by good fortune and by practice, we actually start remembering Krishna, then we can understand that my mind is actually being controlled by Krishna now. I'm attracted to Krishna. And if we're not chanting Hare Krishna, we're not engaged in hearing about Krishna or chanting about Krishna, then the result is the mind will have us think of so many different things. That means we're being controlled by those things. especially when we act on them. There's one thing about thinking about it. The other thing is to actually do something about it. So we have to decide what we want to do, whether we want to serve Krishna or we want to serve, we don't care whether we serve Krishna or not. Or we have 50% for Krishna and 50% for whatever I feel like it. Just make sure that whatever I feel like it is sweetened up by the service of Krishna. <laughs> so it's not difficult to control the mind. We just have to make it. It's difficult, Krishna says, but he said it's, it's yes, Krishna doesn't say it's easy, but it's, it's possible by suitable practice and by detachment. That is, chant Hare Krishna and keep on chanting. And when Maya comes to distract us, then we keep on chanting anyhow. <laughs> That's called detachment. Asam shayatmana yoga dishprapiti memiti ashatmana tu yatata sakya vapmu bhayata. One who's conquered the mind, one whose mind is unbridled, self realization is difficult work. But whose mind is controlled and strives by appropriate means is assured of success. So we're being informed what is the process, simple process, and we just have to accept it, that's all, and apply it. Then, it'll become, then our mind will gradually become conquered by Krishna, not by ourselves, you know, I'm, I'm here with my. <laughs> no, Krishna, Krishna will conquer the mind for us, he'll reveal himself within our heart. That's how our mind gets conquered. By becoming attracted to Krishna. Anything else? Yes. Hare Krishna. <coughs> that comes from Maharaj of servant and master. <clears throat> Um, in our situation, and this 
because of the influence of the false ego, the, we are not acting completely in that pure, uh, uh, how to say, consciousness that we are. We have some motive, or we are doing. It's kind of external. How um, how can become internalized with with how how it's artificial in one sense, and we cannot cover this artific artificiality all the time. What how what to make it internal more and more? What do you think is artificial? Mind and ego, you know, is screaming when, yeah, when we're acting. That's artificial. <laughs> <laughs> our, our actual nature is completely different. But the mind, this covering is artificial. It has nothing to do with ourselves. So when we accept it, this is artificial, then progress is much more easy. We think this is natural and spiritual life is artificial, then devotional service will go very, very slowly. We'll have every, every excuse in the world to ignore our pure devotional service. And we'll suffer. Serving our natural nature. That's all illusory. It's just a mental, mental concoction. Our real identities were dasa, dasa, anodasa. And therefore, at time of initiation, that's what we're supposed to accept. How to become the servant of Krishna's servants. We're supposed to get trained up. That's normal. And then Krishna will help if we accept that. And if we think that that's artificial, being the servant of Krishna's servants, then devotional service is going to be nil. It won't be the pure devotional service. It'll be in the modes of nature. So by understanding and in and intelligence, we should control these lower tendencies. Yeah. Eva. Evam bude puram budva sam stabyatmanam atmana tehi shatru mahabaho kamarupam durashita. Thus, knowing oneself to be transcendental to the material senses, mind, and intelligence, one should control the lower self by the higher. And thus, by spiritual strength, conquer this insatiable enemy known as lust. So we have to have some willingness to give up lust in its various forms. Some forms we say, well, this, this form of lust is too precious. <laughs> it deserves some poetry written about it. <laughs> it's, it. It looks like lust. Lust is actually love. It's my deeper feelings of gratitude, appreciation, and... <laughs> So we have to be willing to give it up, re recognize that this is not me, this is not beneficial for me, it's just some kind of material attachment. Then we can <coughs> give it up and then we can, con by, we can become detached from it and take shelter of Krishna. And then we can control the lower self by the higher self and then conquer this insatiable enemy known as love. Krishna will conquer it for us. We take shelter of Krishna and Krishna will conquer it for us. But when it was in Krishna consciousness, and naturally the material intelligence, the mind, the senses become Krishnaized. Why there is feeling of pain when we try to, when, when ego is attacking? Because Maya will miss our association. <laughs> 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 it's, no, it's not pain because of devotional service we're just feeling the lust that we're about to give up and we mistake it as you know pain because of devotional service rather than this lust yoga chalati manasa that as soon as one tries to make advance in devotional service then maya will trick one from by all kinds of allurements don't give me up <laughs> It's so sweet, this lust, so much potential. So that we feel the pain of our attachment to give up lust. Thank you. Anything else? Or as Krishna said, yad tara gre vishami va parinami ritopamam tatsukam satikam protam 
Atmabudi Pusaruja. That which in the beginning may be bitter like poison, at the end is a nectar and which wakens one to self-realization is said to be happiness in the mode of goodness. So devotional service may seem bitter at first. But that's just like a person, Krishna yes, yet Krishna yes, no, that's right. Yet Krishna Nama Charitati Sitapta Vidya, Pitopatapta Rasanasana Rochikanu, Kinlatvanarat Adunam Saiva Kalajushta, Sabi Kremat, Bhavati, Taikula, Mulahantri. The holy name, form, qualities, and past sense of Krishna were transcendently sweet like sugar candy, although the tongue of one's afflicted by the jaundice of Avidya cannot taste relish anything sweet. It is wonderful how by simply chanting these sweet names every day, a natural relish awakens with one's tongue, and the disease of avidya, ignorance, is destroyed at its root. So, for a person who has jaundice, sugar candy tastes bitter, but it's not bitter. It's jaundice that's bitter. Mm -hmm. But if you take the sugar candy, then gradually the jaundice will be cured. And the proof is that when you taste sugar candy, it's sweet. So certainly the holy name is always sweet because our consciousness is jaundice like we think it's bitter. Like when Krishna was swallowed by Bakasura, he tasted Krishna as, as bitter. And then he spit him out, although Krishna is sweet like sugar candy. <laughs> <laughs> but because Bakasura was jaundice, therefore he couldn't relish Krishna's sweetness. <coughs> Anything? Okay, so we'll stop there. Thank you very much. Grantaraj Shimad Bhagavatam Kijai. Shila Prabhupada Kijai Gaur Pimananda.